Shalom, Israel. Let's get right down into it. Recently, there was a video posted to YouTube called Appeal to the Israelites. And it was posted by a so-called pastor named James David Manning from Harlem. In this video, so-called Pastor Manning addresses the American blacks in particular, along with the West Indians and the Haitians, those of us that call ourselves Israelites. Pastor Manning thought it his business to address us and inform us that we are not Israelites, but indeed we are Hamites. This video was about 14 to 15 minutes of absolutely nothing. He did not prove a thing. He did not present any evidence to support his claim. But at the end of the video, we're supposed to come to the conclusions that we're Hamites just because he said so. Now, there was one particular portion of this video that stood out. So I want to play this portion of the video to you. And then I want to go behind it and I want to see if there's any validity to what this man is saying or is he another in a long line of hustling pork chop eating pimp pulpit pimps that are trying to lead our people astray so i'm going to play this video for you right now and i'm going to come back with some evidence to examine whether what he's saying is true or not check this out and there is not this a scintilla of connection between blacks or Negroes or Africans in America and the connection with the diaspora of the Jews that gave birth to Jesus and that were there during the time of the Mac Maccabees and during the time of the great king of Israel, David. There's not, you can't, there's not one scintilla of evidence. Now that was a very emphatic statement for him to make he didn't sound like he had any doubts he didn't leave any doubt any room for you to doubt that there's no evidence none whatsoever that so-called blacks west indians and haitians in particular that we're the jews there's no evidence to support that that's what he says ladies and gentlemen on your screen is a picture of a place in syria called dura europus Dura Europus is the home of one of the oldest synagogues in the world. Let's read a little bit about Dura Europus from Wikipedia, the online encyclopedia. It says, Dura Europus, also spelled Dura Europus, was a Hellenistic, Parthian, and Roman border city built on an es escarpment 90 miles above the right bank of the Euphrates River. It is located near the village of Salhiye in today's Syria. Dura Europus is extremely important for archaeological reasons. So this is a very, very important archaeological site. As it was abandoned after its conquest in 256 to 257 A.D., Nothing was built over it, and no later building programs obscured the architectonic features of the ancient city. Its location on the edge of empires made for a commingling of cultural traditions, many of which were preserved under the city's ruins. Some remarkable finds have been brought to light, including numerous temples. So they have been found temples and synagogues at Dura Europus. And what is in these temples? Wall decorations. In other words, there are drawings on the wall of the people and inscriptions, military equipment, tombs, and even dramatic evidence of a uh, Sasanian siege during the Imperial Roman period, which led to the site's abandonment. Now I want to take a look at that last that second to last statement that we read right there. It says some remarkable finds have been brought to light, including numerous templates and wall decorations. So there are wall decorations at Dura Europus in these temples. Let's see what we find. When you go to Dura Europus, here's a wall decoration at Dura Europus. You might be wondering, who are these guys? Well, that is a picture of Moses and Aaron 
leading the children of Israel out of Egypt. This is found in Dura Europus, one of the oldest temples in the world. And clearly you could see that both Moses and Aaron are dark skinned. Compare their complexion to the white garments that they're wearing. When you look to the right of your screen, you can see that Aaron clearly has an afro, so does Moses. And everybody in the background to the left and to the right is dark. And look at the hands above them that are reaching down from the sky. Those hands are dark. Everybody in this picture is black. Okay, moving on. Here's another image from Dura Europus. These are three Jewish priests. Take a good look. I love the fact that these priests are all wearing white because you can compare their complexion to the garments that they're wearing. All three of these priests, these Jewish priests from the oldest temple and synagogue in the world at Dura Europus, all three of them are dark. Look at their faces. Look at the hands. And look at the feet in comparison to the white garments that they're wearing. Clearly, everybody in this picture is black. Moving on. Let's look at another guy. Our forefather, Abraham. Here's an image of Abraham from Dura Europus. And yet again, Abraham is wearing a white garment. Yet again, this man has woolly hair, although his hair is white or gray, but you can clearly see that this is a dark-skinned man. Once again, this is from where? Dura Europus. All right, moving on. Here's a picture of Christ raising the sick from his bed. Now, the guy at the very top, that's Christ. That's Yahweh Shah, Jesus Christ. And you can clearly see from this image that the guy in the image is dark skinned and he has an afro. All these images are from Dura Europus. Now I want to go back really quick and I want to take one more look at this picture I have of Moses and Aaron. It's very important because just in case you think I'm making it up that this is actually Moses and Aaron and these are actually the Israelites, here's a book by an author by the name of Michael Grant. I went into this before. Michael Grant, a scholar, wrote a book called The History of Ancient Israel. And on the cover of his book, he included the very same picture from Dura Europus, except the picture on his book is in black and white. So what is this showing you? That he knows that the people depicted in those pictures are Israelites. And all of them are black. But Pastor Manning says... And there is not this, a scintilla of connection between blacks or Negroes or Africans in America and the connection with the diaspora of the Jews that gave birth to Jesus and that were there during the time of the Mac Maccabees and during the time of the great king of Israel, David. There's not, you can't, there's not one scintilla of evidence. Not a scintilla, huh? Okay, let's go to the book of Genesis chapter 14, verse 13, and let's read. And it says, And there came one that had escaped and told Abram the Hebrew. So Abram was a Hebrew. Now we have to research and get a little more information about the Hebrews. So let's go to Zondervan's Compact Bible Dictionary, and let's look up the word ruddy. When we look up the word ruddy in Zondervan's Compact Bible Dictionary, it's going to give us a little bit of scholarly information about the Hebrews. And it reads, ruddy, a word used to refer to a red or fair complexion in contrast to the dark skin of the Hebrews. So according to Zondervan's Bible Dictionary, these scholars have concluded that the Hebrews were dark-skinned and Abram was a Hebrew. That's why that picture from Dura Europus, one of the oldest temples in the world, depicts Abram as being 
dark skin. Why? Because the scholars know that Abram was a Hebrew, but Pastor Manning is not a scholar. That's why he thinks the Jews are white. Okay? Now let's get a little more information from the same book called Zondervan's Bible Dictionary. Let's look up the word ham. And it reads, Ham, the youngest son of Noah, born probably about 96 years before the flood, and one of eight persons to live through the flood. He became the progenitor, which means the father, of the dark races, not the Negroes. Because the Negroes, unlike the rest of the dark races, are not Hamites, not Africans. They are Hebrews. The Negroes are the Hebrews. We're the real Hebrews. And if Abraham was a Hebrew, that would make Isaac, his son, a Hebrew. And Isaac's son, Jacob, would also be a Hebrew. And Jacob's 12 sons, which later became known as the 12 tribes of Israel, they are Hebrews. That's why all the pictures depict them as being dark skin. See, the scholars know this, but like I said, Pastor Manning is not a scholar. That's why he makes stupid statements like... And there is not this, a scintilla of connection between blacks or Negroes or Africans in America and the connection with the diaspora of the Jews that gave birth to Jesus and that were there during the time of the Macca Maccabees and during the time of the great king of Israel, David. There's not, you can't, there's not one scintilla of evidence. And what about the catacombs of Rome, which were underground hiding places and burial grounds for the Jews and the Christians, which were Jews that were following Christ, that are underneath Rome? What about those? Let's read a little bit about the catacombs from the online encyclopedia called Wikipedia. I'm just going to focus on the last sentence of this paragraph because that's the part that's relevant to this topic. It says... The Christian catacombs are extremely important for the art history of early Christian art, as they contain the great majority of examples from before, about 400 AD, in fresco and sculpture. So all the pictures in the catacombs are from before 400 AD. That's over a thousand years before the Renaissance before you get all that ugly art that you see in the Sistine Chapel that was created by Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci. This is over a thousand years before that garbage. And when you go into the catacombs, what do you see? You see an image of the Good Shepherd. Now take a look at that image. Dark skin with an afro. That's clear. And what about this one? This is Christ and the Twelve Apostles. And everybody in the picture is dark. Compare their complexion to the white garments that they're wearing. That's clear. And what about this one? This is Daniel. Look how dark he is compared to his complexion. And the list goes on and on and on. And all this can be found in books that are available today. You can get these books from Strand's Bookstore. You can order these books from um, Amazon.com eBay, here's a good book right here called The Catacombs. You can get this online, very easy. But if you can't get these books, you can always come to our website and click on a tab that says Library, and you'll get this along with a whole bunch of other videos that go into this topic and break it down to a core. There is innumerable amounts of evidence. Even with all the destruction of the black art that took place during the Renaissance, there is innumerable evidence that the so-called blacks are the real Jews, which is pursuant to the scriptures. So if I were you, Pastor Manning, I would go back to wherever you got your seminary diploma from and ask for a full refund because they didn't teach you a damn thing.